Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. When you have it, say amen. Okay. I am reading out of the ESV version. You can follow along in whatever version you have. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Father, I have studied, I have prayed, but Lord, it's by your Spirit that we will receive and be transformed by this Word. So would you anoint me to preach it clearly, and would you anoint all of us to hear it and receive it. Let a spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon us as we receive the Word of God. We ask it in the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning on a thought. It's already planned. It's already planned. Um, I love a good plan. Do I have any planners in the room? Can I take it one step further? Do I have any control freaks in the room? <laughs> we all love to plan. I love a good plan. It's amazing how God takes two polar opposites and brings them together. I'm a planner. Shanna's more go with the flow. And those first couple years of marriage were quite interesting, weren't they? To try to figure all that out. But um, I love an agenda. I love to plan. You give me a good spreadsheet that's balanced out, it's like a warm hug. I love a good spreadsheet. Come on. And so... We all have plans. Us as a family, we have a family calendar that we go by. Uh, we're currently working on having a church calendar where everything is on the calendar. Sometimes Shanna will look at me and say, oh, hey, by the way, we've got this meeting at school. Or by the way, we've got this. And I'll just look straight at her and I'll say, it's not on the calendar. <laughs> it needs to be on the calendar. I didn't plan for that. And so in a way... We're all planners. We're planning for this trunk or treat. A lot of planning's got into it. So we're all planners. Uh, my daughter is a planner. She got that from me, and she got that from my mother. You should have seen all of us in the car coming from Oklahoma to California. I mean, Dad, where are we stopping? Dad, when are we going to get gas? Where are we going to eat? Where are we going tomorrow? All this. I'm like, we ain't even 100 miles out of Oklahoma City. Girl, you're going to have to chill out. You're going to have to breathe deep and go with the flow. We're all planners, and, and we make plans. But the problem is our plans can be interrupted and, quite frankly, can be disrupted. I like to say it this way, our plans can get sideways and they can go south really quick. Now, what's interesting is that God is a planner also. But God is not like us. God is a perfect planner. His plans are flawless and He already has a plan for everyone. He has a plan for you and He has a plan for your family. Isn't that awesome? He already has a plan. And what he's trying to tell Jeremiah here is, I knew you and I had a call on your life before you were ever even born. That is a powerful statement. And it reveals to us the character of God. That God is not up in heaven ruling on the fly. God does not shoot from the hip. God is not sporadic. God is not up there trying to figure this whole thing out. God is not up there saying, I wonder what's going to happen in this election. I wonder what's going to happen with Israel years down the road. I wonder what's going to happen with Justin. Or I wonder what's going to happen with Kevin or Jim. I wonder what's going to happen. That is not what God is doing. God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. You are either all-knowing or you're not. He is all-knowing, and He is immutable, which means He never changes. I am the Lord, and I change not. Hallelujah. 
no matter what is going on in your life right now, no matter what trials you're facing, God already had a plan for you, and He still has a plan for you, and His plan is good because He is good. His will is not unhinged from His character. See, when bad things happen, we, we have to process those things. They hurt. They're painful. But we have to remember that God's will is not unhinged from His character. His will is good because He is good. There is nothing bad in Him. There is no darkness in Him. Do evil things happen? Yes, they do. But His plan is good because He is good. See, His plan for you existed in His mind before mom and dad even thought of you. Phew. Wow. We all have probably said this at one time. I know I myself have said this. We might make the statement that I was called by God as a teenager. Many have said I was called by God at youth camp. I myself have said I was called by God as a young man in my early 20s. But that is not 100% true. The reason it's not true is because that's not when the call was initiated. It's when we responded to the call. The call on your life and the plan on your life was initiated in the beginning. That's amazing to think about. That He had a call on your life and a plan for your life in the beginning. God calls you and He has a plan for your life. You are not here by accident. Look at your neighbor right now and say, you're not here by accident. You are not the random collection of cells and atoms. You are not just a mistake. You are not here just by time plus matter plus chance. That is not why you are here. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made by your heavenly Father who created heaven and earth and has a plan for you today. Fearfully and wonderfully made. I like to say it this way. Before you belonged to your mom and dad, you belonged to God. And hear me, that is why abortion is one of the most vile, evil things in this world. I'm just going to go out and say it. We have become a nation of gods ourselves. And we want to play God. Well, that's just nothing but a clump of cells. We can, we can do away with it, and then we can recreate. We can do all this stuff. No, sir. No, ma'am. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is the creator of all. And in Him and through Him, all things were made. And without Him, nothing has its existence. He had a plan for you before you were ever born. You are not here today by chance. You also didn't go through what you went through by accident. We all have a story. We all have a past. But I want to tell you this, that your story, even if it's painful, you didn't go through that stuff by accident. Were there some bad choices made? Absolutely. Anybody in here ever made bad choices? This is the holy section over here, I guess. We've all made bad choices. But here's the other thing. Other people have made bad choices that affected our life. Our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, friends. People have made bad choices that have affected our life. Have people hurt you? Yes, they have. But I want you to, I want to tell you this, that God still has a plan. Even when somebody else makes a choice that affects your life. And I hear the prophet Isaiah saying this in chapter 46, For I am God and there is no other, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. You may be in here today 
and you've got a story a mile long and you've got some bumps and bruises and the devil's tried to take you out. But even when the devil tried to take you out, God overturned it and he still has a plan for you. Still has a plan for you. You may have been beaten down and you think that, you know what, my life is just in shambles and this is as good as it can get. But I want to tell you today, I'm coming against a spirit of false identity. Because that's what the enemy wants to do to you. He wants to give you a false identity. God set you apart from birth, gave you a name, gave you a purpose, and said, this is my child, this is what I want you to do, and the devil comes in and hijacks it and says, no, you're going to be just like your daddy. Nope, you're going to be just like your grandma. You're going to be just like that one relative that did this. I want to tell you, you have an identity, and it's in your heavenly Father, and it's in Jesus Christ. Before the foundations of the world, He called you that you would be adopted as a son and a daughter of the Most High. You say, well, pastor, you just don't understand what life has done to me. You don't understand what my family's done to me. You don't understand what people have done to me. I don't want to minimize what you've been through. I've got a story of my own. I don't want to minimize any of that. I don't want to minimize the pain you've walked through. I don't want to minimize all of the processing you've had to do. But I just want to tell you this. I want to give you hope today. Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit. They wanted to do away with him. They didn't like him. They didn't want their father's approval of him. They threw him in a pit. And their actions were terrible. But God brought him up out of the pit to the palace. And then finally, when he appointed him, he looks at his brothers and he said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. He's the God of the turnaround. Now here's what God is trying to do in Jeremiah and what he's trying to do in us today. He's trying to get every one of us to align our life and our will and our plan and our purpose with His purpose. I used to go to the chiropractor a lot, and they would always say, you're out of alignment. And when I was out of alignment, there was a lot of pain. And God is God, and He's calling us to come into alignment with what He has spoken over your life. Now, a little bit of tension, a little bit of wrestling we're going to do this morning. God is sovereign. Amen? God can do whatever He wants. Whatever He wants. And nothing can stop Him. He can do whatever He wants. He rules sovereignly. But here's what's interesting. In this sovereign thing, He's called us into partnership and fellowship with Him. Now, there's a real mysterious and paradoxical element to the Christian life. And we look at this, and, and I've heard this as a young kid, and I never quite understood this. I would hear this as a little boy and say, well, you know, that group of Christians, they believe in predestination. That group of Christians, they believe in free will. And they would always be at odds with each other, like this. It's like you had the predestination crowd, then you had the free will crowd. And it was like two major doctrinal differences that really brought a lot of division to the body of Christ. And I never understood why we're divided over that issue. So can I, can I go a little bit deep? Y'all okay? I don't like the term free will. I like the word free agency. I know we have free agency. We can make choices. The reason I don't like free will is because it makes it sound like we can will something into existence that's not there. When I go to in and out ooh, come on, somebody. When I go to in and out I can sit there and, and order a hamburger, but then I can just look at the menu and say, I'm just going to exercise my free will and I want a chicken sandwich. That dude's going to look at me and say, sir, uh, what would you like? Well, I, I just want a chicken sandwich. Sir, it's not on the menu. Well, I just free will it to be. So I'll take a chicken sandwich. You know what that guy's going to say? He's going to look at me and say, dude, get out of here. We ain't got no chicken. But I do have a choice. I'm a free agent. I make a choice. Do you know I am one decision away from altering my life, my wife's life, my kid's life, and the life of this church if I make one stupid decision? We have choice. And I'm going to make a bold statement. 
every Christian believes in free agency and predestination. Well, did God choose me or did I choose God? Both. Both. You chose Him and He chose you. Write this down. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go deep, okay? Don't dumb down doctrine to solve your dilemma. And the problem is we try to put God and the Holy Spirit in our little box, in our little camp. You got the Reformed camp, the Baptist camp, the Pentecostal camp, the AG camp, and we dumb down all this stuff so we can get everything in our little theological box. Don't dumb down doctrine just to solve your dilemma. You will always have a dilemma. You will always have a dilemma on does God choose me or do I choose God? Was that in God's plan or did their choice mess it up? Well, if there's a dilemma, yes. Don't try to solve the tension. Live in the tension. Live in the tension. Because that's where God is. And you might be looking at me and say, well, how could God have a plan for my life when all this horrible stuff happened? Because it's already been planned. And He will overturn it just like He did with Joseph. Now here's the, the thing. In our choice, God is sovereign, God is ruling, God has a plan, but we have this choice in the matter. And somewhere along the way, God says, I'm sovereign, all-knowing, everything, but I want you to align with my sovereign will. He calls you to come into alignment with what He wants to do with you. Can I say it another way? He wants your cooperation. He wants you to cooperate with Him. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to make you do anything. He wants you to cooperate this morning and say, you know what? You may be walking this way, but I knew you before you were even born, and I want you to start walking this way with me. That's His call over you. Now, what I want you to realize is in order to do that, you have to surrender. That's the first step. The first step is to surrender to Christ. To surrender your agenda. Surrender your plans. Where's all my planners at? To walk in God's plan, you have to surrender your own plan. Surrender your plans. Surrender your will. Surrender your ambitions. All to say, God, I want to do what You want me to do. I want to be who You say that I am. I want you to look at this. God said, I knew you. There's an intimacy there. I knew you. Wow. I knew you. And then he said, I consecrated you. You know what that means? It means I set you apart. I set you apart. And then he says, I appointed you. You know what that means? That means I placed a mantle on you. I placed an assignment on you before you were even born. Whew. I need you to realize this, in order to step into what God has for you, you have to step away from where you are now. See, in order to come to church this morning, you had to leave your house. And when you leave to go to lunch, you will have to leave the church to get into your car. Then you'll have to leave your car to get in the restaurant. Then you'll have to leave the restaurant to get back in your car. Then you'll have to leave the car again to get back in your house. In order to step into something, you have to leave something. And God says it's time to step out of the old and into the new and step out of false identity to what your mom or somebody has called you or your friend has called you or a relative has called you or the enemy has called you. you got to step out of that false identity and into my new identity that I placed on you before you were even born. Step out to step in. God is calling you in deep water to His call. It's a new season. I'm declaring that today. It's a new season for me and my family, and it's a new season for you and your family, and it's a new season for TFA. And I want you to step out and step in to what God is calling you to do. Let's turn to Acts 2. I want to show you something. Jesus dying on the cross 
was part of the plan of God. I'd say it this way. Jesus dying on the cross wasn't plan B, it was plan A. So watch this. Acts 2, verses 23 through 24. When you have it, say amen. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan. Underline that in your Bible. To the definite plan plan and foreknowledge of God. Remember what he, he declares the end from the beginning. It was in his plan. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Did men make some dumb choices and evil choices that killed the Lord of glory? Yes. Was it the definite plan of God? Yes. You see, it's all in the plan. It's all in the Spirit working in our choices and drawing us and calling us. God still has a plan. And if you follow Him and surrender to Him, He will work His plan for His glory and for your good. He still has a plan. I heard a pastor say this one time, he said, I had a sculptor in my church. And he said, I've always loved art, but particularly sculpting. He said, I looked at this statue. And he said, I was mesmerized. And the sculptor that attended my church, I pulled him aside one Sunday and I said, man, I looked at some of your work. And he said, you've got like this guy pointing. And he said, dude, how did you do that with clay? How did you point? How did you not knock that finger off? How did you get so precise in sculpting this. And that man looked at him and he said, Pastor, you don't understand. That's not how it works. He said, okay, tell me. He said, the problem is you look at that and you see a rock. As a sculptor, I look at that and I see an image. And all I do is knock stuff away till the image that I see is revealed. Before you were born, God had an image of you, a name of you. And now what's happening? He's softening that hard heart. And every day you walk with him, he's knocking more stuff off to reveal the image and the call and the plan that he has on your life before you were even born. The problem is some people just don't want the stuff knocked off. Come on, somebody. They just, they don't want it or they refuse to surrender or they want to hang on to that stuff or they take that false identity of no, that's, this is who I am. And this is no, no, you are who God says you are and what nobody else says. There's an image in you that God wants to bring out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just want to encourage you today. You know, if you get on social media for any length of time, how many know your anxiety goes through the roof? I don't care what you watch. If it's Fox, MSNBC, CNN, turn that on for five minutes, then check your pulse. Right? It, you really feel like everything's out of control. You really feel like this, 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 this just... But God has a plan. God had a plan during COVID. God has a plan now. God had a plan when He brought you through, and God has a plan now to bring you through again. God has a plan. When it looks like God's plan has been thwarted, keep believing. When it looks like God's plan has been thwarted, keep trusting. When your kids are running from God and your grandkids are running from God, keep believing in God's plan. When life takes an unexpected turn, still believe in His plan. When the doctor walks in and says, you know what, I don't have a good report, you're not going to want to hear this, still believe in God's plan that He knew you and formed you before you were born and everything will work out for good. Keep believing. Now I want to share a story with you. God had a call on my life and a plan for my life before I was even born. 
And there is such a thing. How many know when God moves, the enemy moves too? And I do believe in something called generational curses. Do you know why I believe in that? It's not because of any theological class I've taken. It's because my father, I never met the man in my life. My father was an alcoholic and did not know the Lord and did not live right. I never met him. And even when I didn't meet him, I was going down the same path at 18 years old. Never even met the man. Saw two pictures of him. That was it. And I was doing the same things he was doing, and I was going down the same path he was going. But even in that, God had a plan and a call on my life before I was born. Now, this is an incredible story, and I want to ask for some grace because I'll probably get pretty emotional. But this past summer, I want to say early summer, probably June, God is dealing with me and my wife. He knows and he's been showing us and speaking to us by his spirit, that transition is coming. That it's time to leave Oklahoma. Your assignment is complete at the church, and it's time to step out. And we are scared to death. And it wasn't until the spring, you know, a couple months prior to that, that I really reached out to some leaders here in the SoCal network and really just kind of took that step of faith. And now here we are in June and nothing's happening and I don't know what's going on and I'm scared to death and Lord's how's it all going to work and, and and I'm just so anxious and God is dealing with us and we don't know where we're going to end up we know it's somewhere in Southern California but we don't know where is it going to be San Diego LA is it going to be some is it going to be Arizona we don't know we don't know a thing and we're just anxious and when you get anxious sometimes you can forget the promises of God now we go to my mother's house. And we go there. And she's sitting at her table. And she says, hey, son, look what I found. And I said, what'd you find? And I, I sent it to Kendall. He'll have it on the screen. This is what she found. And I thought, what is that? And if you ever see me, I keep this in my Bible. And it's a piece of stationery from Pacific Printers and Stationers, Pacific Coast Highway, Lamita, California. This stationery was printed in 1985. And she said, son, look what I found. I forgot all about this. And I said, and the first thing that caught my eye was this relocating. This is written in 1985. And I looked and I said, okay. Mom, what is this? I said, and I looked at it and I looked through the scriptures. I said, okay, time out. You need to tell me what this is about. I said, I'll put the coffee on. Me and you can have a cup of coffee, but you've got to tell me what this is. And this is what she told me. She said, son, 1985, I was four months pregnant with you. And I knew I had to leave your father. He was an alcoholic. He wouldn't stop drinking. He didn't want to be around you. He just kind of wanted to live his life. I loved him. I didn't know where I was going to go, but I knew I had to leave. And I went to Pastor Bob, Calvary Light Christian Center in Lamita, California, 1985. I made an appointment to see Pastor Bob and he counseled me. And he said, Debbie, you've got to leave. And he took out his stationery and wrote these scriptures down. And it ministered to me. And I said, okay. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me as I began to look at these scriptures. The Lord spoke to my mother in 1985 through this pastor. And these scriptures encouraged my mother that God still had a plan. Fast forward to the summer of 2024. We are in Oklahoma. And I look at these scriptures and the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me. Justin, I had a plan for you then. I got a plan for you now. That baby that she was four months pregnant with was me. And now to 2024, I'm scared. 
I don't know where we're going to go. I've got my own family. I've got my children with their needs. I don't know how we're going to make ends meet. I don't even know if we're going to be pastoring a church. All I know is we have to leave. And I don't know what is going to happen. And if you look on the screen, I turn to Exodus 23, and I just burst into tears. Exodus 23, verse 20. This was written in 1985. And that baby was me. And I read this again in the summer of 24. Would you look to see what Exodus 20, 23 says? Behold, I send an angel before you. To guard you on the way to bring you to the place that I have prepared. That was a promise to my mother for her about me. And then he makes the promise to me and my children. And you see how, but keep that back up there. Let's leave it up there. You see how he circles verse 26? Watch this. (laughs) None shall miscarry or be barren in your land, and I will fulfill the number of your days. And back in 1985, the Lord was telling my mother, I know your husband doesn't want that baby, but I've got a call on that baby, and I want that baby. And years down the road, there's going to be a church in Tulare, California that wants that baby. See, and you might look at me and say, oh, well, you're special. He has a special plan for you. God is no respecter of persons. And if he made that promise to my mom and to me and my family, the promises he made to you are yes and amen. 